The Ordinary's Ultimate Guide to Mixing, specifically what you shouldn't mix. This video is for two types of people, those who are interested in purchasing The Ordinary and trying to create a routine, but obviously don't want to use products that will cancel each other out or be dangerous, or people who already have The Ordinary products at home and you're struggling to understand where to put them in your skincare routine and what they should or should not be mixed with. I highly recommend that you take some notes or just bring this video with you into the bathroom or the kitchen fridge or wherever it is that you store your skincare. And that way we can go through speaking about these together and you can start to align or reorganize your products to understand where and how they fit into your routine. You might need to reference this video in the future, so if you hit watch later or if you text this or email this to yourself, you can keep tabs on it so that if you add new things to your routine or if something in your routine changes, you know where to put it and what's actually up as based on science. This is an exhaustive list of the ordinary contradictions and this took hours, this took days, this took, this took a couple months. This took a long time and that is dedication to what The Ordinary has on their website, public information, and also facts that are based on science, based on the molecules and the ingredients that are actually in these products and how they interact. If that doesn't deserve a like or a subscribe, I don't know what does. <laughs> When starting, let's go through the same order that The Ordinary has these listed on the website, which means starting with antioxidants. Antioxidants can be pretty picky because in general they don't pair well with water. Most of these are water-free formulas and anything with water can degrade them. So this is why you always have to turn and learn your products. And if you see water as the first ingredient, you know that antioxidants won't play well. Mixing in this sense means don't mix them in your hand at the same time and put them on your face. And it also means wait like 30 minutes between application if you can. If you only have five or ten minutes it's probably going to be okay but in general I'd prefer you wait 30 minutes to an hour before relayering or ideally use your antioxidants and contradictory products at opposite times a day. For instance one in the morning one in the evening. If you are using them with water-based products at the same time of day use your water products first allow them to sink in wait as long as you can and then apply your antioxidants the euk 140 is a fantastic antioxidant that the ordinary really pioneered but it has manganese chloride that's what the euk is and unfortunately this doesn't play well with a lot of other ingredients this includes any acids this includes any vitamin c and the l-ascorbic acid 100 percent and the copper peptides don't play well with this one the resveratrol and ferulic acid again should be avoided with water products products and it should also be avoided with the copper peptides because again those copper peptides are tricky. The Pycnogenol 5% is a product that's pretty new to me but it's derived from pine trees and off the bat I'm really starting to like it and from the Ordinary's list of available antioxidants it's also the most stable and the most friendly when it comes to playing with others. Again the Ordinary does recommend avoiding other water-based products so try to give it that time in between and again the copper peptides don't play fun but any of the other other peptides, any of the retinols, any of the acids, and any of the vitamin C's actually do pretty well with this. Specifically, The Ordinary has told me that the vitamin C's, the retinols, and niacinamide can be used with this Pycnogenol 5%, which is really impressive. So I'm going to be experimenting with this one a bit more, and it's probably the easiest antioxidant to add to a routine if you're worried about contradictions. The Squalane Cleanser is good with everything because it's a cleanser. It's meant to remove your makeup and you can pretty much put anything you want afterwards. The glycolic acid toning solution is one of my favorite products and just like it says it is a toner. The Ordinary recommends it for use only one time a day and we have a video explaining what time of day you should use these different products if you're confused if they go in the morning or in the evening. It is an acid-based product so please be careful when using other acids around it just because you don't want to give yourself too much of an acid and get a burn but overall you can use this as a toner and then use an acid after. Same with retinol, not detrimental if you use them together, it's totally fine, but keep in mind that retinol generally works at a pH that's close to your skin, which is 5.5, and this product states on the front the pH is around 3.6. So if you're using this with a retinol, it's just not going to make either of them very effective. You can do it, however. I am not in control of your face. You also can do vitamin C with these. You want to just be careful because you don't want to have any stinging or any burning. I would not mix this with the 100% L-ascorbic acid powder unless your face is really built up and you're ready for a burn <laughs> because it will sting very badly like bees ouch doesn't mean I haven't done it. <laughs> because the first ingredient is water, you do want to avoid any of the Ordinary's antioxidants with this, and because the buffet and copper peptides are tricky, you don't want to use these back to back. You can use other peptides with this if you so choose to, but again, I would use this first, let it soak into your skin, 
give it five to ten minutes preferably and then you can go on with peptides if you really want to. Then let's talk about acids. The first one that The Ordinary mentions is the AHA BHA peeling solution. This is wonderful but because it is so strong you don't want to use it alongside other acids. Again if you do it's just making the acid in here even stronger. Now I've done a whole video on how to use this in a way that we would do in a medical spa or in a professional office to prevent from chemical burns and things like that but let me tell you some people they put on a drop of this for three minutes and it burns them for days. Other people like myself can put this on and leave it on longer than is ever recommended and uh, they won't feel anything. So it really depends on how tolerant your skin is and how built up your skin is to different acids. In addition, you do not want to mix that EUK antioxidant with this. You do not want to mix any peptides with this whatsoever. And you don't want to mix in the 100% L-ascorbic acid, that vitamin C, just because it would not play well together. The good thing is that once you're done with this mask, and once you rinse it off, you can use something like the niacinamide and zinc um, or any of the hyaluronic acid products right after. Um, that, in my opinion, is a really good way to follow up after finishing this. Then we've got the beautiful azelaic acid 10%, and I love this one specifically because it is an acid that plays well with the other ingredients that The Ordinary has. It is inside of a dimethicone suspension. It comes out kind of like a cream, so that alone allows it to be a little bit more stable. And azelaic acid is pretty tolerant, considering that it is an acid at the end of the day. We've done an entire video that explains rosacea-prone skin and why this is really key in helping to treat or manage rosacea, and you can watch that here. Or if you're looking for a skin guide, a routine guide, a routine builder, I don't know, call it what you want to. <laughs> With azelaic acid, you need to understand your skin. Again, other acids may be okay, but at the end of the day, you're adding multiple acids, so you don't want to strip your skin. Proceed with caution and always patch test, which, yes, we've done a video on patch testing here as well. <laughs> Again, no EUK or copper peptides with this just because they don't play nice. The two things that I'm a little bit eh, iffy about are mixing it with the L-ascorbic acid powder or using any of the non-copper peptides before this and then using this. Those two could probably be okay, but please proceed with caution just because there may be some contradictions that doesn't happen for everyone, but shows up on your face. Better to be safe than sorry. Other than the contradictions I just mentioned, this plays well with pretty much everything else. We're talking retinoids, we're talking other vitamin Cs, and of course those hydrators and oils. The next contradictions apply to all other acids. Reading from the website, this includes the alpha lipoic acid 5%, lactic acid, mandelic acid, and salicylic acid and salicylic acid mask. You don't want to mix other acids with them, just because again, they could become more potent. As always, no EUK and no copper peptides because they are not friendly with anybody. <laughs> and with the acids, again, I wouldn't recommend mixing the pure 100% L-ascorbic acid powder just because acids and vitamin C can really sting and burn the skin. All of that was a lot to absorb. Haha, <laughs> get it? Absorb? Like absorbing into skin? Okay, I'm done. But I do have some good news. All of the hydrators and all of the oils that The Ordinary has really play well with other products. There really are no contraindications, even with the EUK140 and the copper peptides. So if you want to use an oil as a hydrator or as something to lock things in, you can go ahead. The one thing to remember is that two specific oils, the sea buckthorn oil and the rosehip oil, have high amounts of beneficial properties to them. So when you are using those, you do want to pair them with a sunscreen if you're using them during the day. But a sunscreen should also always be used during the day, so please take that with a grain of salt or a grain of sodium hyaluronate, whichever you prefer. <laughs> oh, I said I was done with the cringy jokes, but I lied, didn't I? Oops. <laughs> Another note, the amino acids in B5 is a really great one. The only major contraindication I would have with this is don't mix it with a lot of other acidic products. Not the end of the world if you do, but again, they would decrease the penetration of this. So you wanna get the most out of your money even if you only spent five to 10 bucks. That's my opinion. <laughs> Then let's talk about more molecules. First up, we've got that alpha arbutin. This is at 2% with hyaluronic acid. And I have really good news because this plays well with pretty much everything. Again, it is a water base, so you might want to beware with some of those antioxidants. But overall, this shouldn't have major impacts with other things. It shouldn't destroy your skin, shouldn't cause major problems. And overall, it gets along pretty well. It's just those antioxidants, and the ordinary did not specify if the copper plus peptides can be 
be used along with this, um, but you should be able to use other peptides with it. And the copper peptides, just because I know they're tricky, I would avoid just in case. Then we have the caffeine solution plus EGCG. This is meant to be used under the eyes. The ordinary lists no contradictions. And we've actually done a video because I have recommended people use it in a different way other than the under eyes for some anti-aging purposes, but there's a video that explains that philosophy. The good news is that there is nothing in here that should contradict with anything else. The only little beware with this is that because it is a water-based solution, you want to avoid any of those products that are sensitive to water, aka those antioxidants. So specifically the EUK 140, I wouldn't layer it or mix it with this. But other than that, should be good. Niacinamide and zinc, my would-be firstborn child if I was a skincare mother. I love this stuff, and this stuff loves my face. The thing about it is that there are a few contradictions that you should know of. The first is surprising, but it's actually vitamin C products. You see, normally niacinamide and vitamin C are totally fine together. The reason why is that in order for them to be dangerous or for them to combine into niacin or other harmful compounds is that you have to have very specific circumstances, high temperatures, etc. So normally there's no problem mixing niacinamide and vitamin C. However, the ordinary specifically states that their vitamin C's are formulated in a certain way and that their zinc and niacinamide is formulated in a certain way that do not play well together. I have made this mistake. I've used this combination before and the product actually got really pilly on my skin. It kind of balled up and chunked up, which was not cool, even though it was technically cool because wow, chemistry happening right in front of my hands. But in general, do not mix the niacinamide and zinc with any other vitamin C products from the ordinary. You would ideally want to use these at different times a day, for example, using your vitamin C in the morning and using your zinc and niacinamide at night. Again, because this is a water base, you do not want to use it with the EUK or with the other antioxidants. That one exception is that pine bark pycnogenol, which is really good with this stuff. And the other thing I want you to know is about hyaluronic acid. A lot of people ask if they can use hyaluronic acid along with their zinc and niacinamide. The answer is yes. What I would personally recommend is putting on the hyaluronic acid first so it can kind of penetrate, and then putting the zinc and niacinamide on so that it can lend some of that water to the hyaluronic acid slash sodium hyaluronate because they're really labeled as the same thing. And then the niacinamide and zinc PCA can kind of work on that top level, again, trying to reduce redness and to tell your skin to stop producing so much oil. Stop it, pores. I'm 27, like this should have gone away by now. <laughs> Meh. Peptides, peptides. The first one is the copper peptide, which is the most difficult because it does not play well with anyone. Specifically, avoid acids. The reason why is because copper peptides and acids work better at different pHs, and you don't want them to cancel each other out. Don't use any vitamin C with the copper peptides, and don't use any antioxidants with the copper peptides. And this also includes the pycnogenol, which was the best hope for an antioxidant that ever would. Alas, no. I would also say the same goes for the regular buffet. The only thing is that the buffet is much more stable, so you have a better chance of it working and penetrating even if you do make one of these mistakes. But just keep that in mind. Or on face, wherever you wanna put it. Now The Ordinary does have two other forms of peptides, the Argrelin solution as well as the Matrixyl and 10% and Hyaluronic Acid. These are still peptides at the end of the day, but they're not as picky as the Buffet or the Buffet plus Copper peptides. For both of these, I would say avoid acids because they work best in different pHs, but if you really wanted to put a peptide and an acid together, I would do one of these two. No vitamin C with any of these peptides, and again, avoid the antioxidants, not because antioxidants and peptides are bad together, but because antioxidants antioxidants don't do well with water-based solutions. And guess what? Both of these have a first ingredient of water. The one exception of a vitamin C that actually works really well with peptides, specifically these two, is the ascorbyl glucoside. The other thing is that both of these play very well with retinols, so keep that in mind. Speaking of retinoids, let's talk a little bit more about them. The Ordinary has two basic types of retinoids. The first one is a retinoid emulsion, which has water in it, and the second one is a retinol in squalane, which is an oil base. Again, these are are all within the same vitamin A family, um, coming from retinoic acid, even if they are derivatives of retinoic acid, and even some of these retinols in general can cause major peeling. This active retinoid does have water in it, so no antioxidants with this one, except for the pine-derived pycnogenol. That is one that actually works really well with the active retinoid. The other thing is that retinol works best at a pH that is around your skin, which is a 5.5. Many acids are lower, they're usually like a 3.5 or a 4. So if you want to get the most out of your money, use 
these and your acids at different times. But again, if you don't, just be aware of sensitivity and, um, and you know, understand that you may not be getting the best treatment or the best penetration that you would be if you use them separately. Then let's talk about the oil-based retinoids. These are the retinoids in squalene, whether it's the 1%, 2%, etc. These are actually really fun and don't have a lot of contradictions. Specifically, because they are an oil base, they could technically play with some of those antioxidants if you really wanted to. Again, these are best at a neutral pH, so I wouldn't mix them with acids, but it's not detrimental if you do. And the good news is that all of the Ordinary's retinoids actually play really well with their peptides, so that's a huge bonus. Additionally, you could use retinoids and vitamin C together. There are a couple of upcoming medical studies that actually show that while people once thought that vitamin C would degrade retinoids, they might actually stabilize them. So more science and paid studies need to be done, but to me that does look promising. And for sunscreen, there are no contradictions! Yay! And when we actually look at the ingredients of this one that I have, um, we don't see water in here until the very, very bottom. So I would say that you could also use these with your antioxidants. Next, we've got all that vitamin C, and The Ordinary's vitamin Cs have different levels of how much vitamin C is in them. They have some that are pretty tame and could be mixed with other things, and others that like, if it's the 23%, the 30%, or the 100%, you don't want to mix them with certain things. Specifically, that would be the EUK140. Again, they just don't like each other. I would say most acids, just to be safe, because these can burn on their own, and if you mix them with the acid, they could really burn. No peptides, especially especially the copper peptides because they are notoriously bitchy, if that's a word we can use for them. They're little proper prissy peptides and they like to make problems. <laughs> no niacinamide mixing because again, this normally would not be an issue, but for the Ordinary's formulation, they do not mix well. But the good news is that the vitamin C does play very well with the retinols that The Ordinary has that we just mentioned, and vitamin C also plays well with each other, which is great. Vitamin C also is great next to sunscreen. There are some scientific research studies and medical papers showing that they might boost the efficacy of sunscreen by just a little bit, so that is really fantastic. If you're confused about vitamin C, we've actually done a vitamin C guide to help you understand which vitamin C is right for your skin type, and you can watch that here. This video took a lot of work and dedication, so so if you appreciate it, I would appreciate a share, whichever social media you want to do that on. And of course, if you liked it, be sure to that like button and don't forget to whoosh, that subscribe button. There's more videos on The Ordinary right here and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.